Sadhguru, I can proudly say that I am in the top institute of eminence, which we now call heaven. And <laughs> every student who has come here has burned himself inside out to come to this place. And that can be said about each and every institute in India. And after coming to this heaven also, our days and nights are same, working very hard to achieve the so-called aim. I want to know, but still, our careers are not assured. We don't know about our career. And we don't know whether our dream, luxurious life of our dreams, whether we will ever achieve. Now, when we say about the other aspect, seeing the politicians, most of them, and rich criminals, most of them, at least almost fifth pass, not more than that, but they, they and their dependents, all having a assured but career. they don't go to Canada, they go to London. <laughs> They go to London, yeah. And <laughs> citizenship of London is assured and at the same time, they are having best of luxuries. So my point is, education and working day and night hard for it, is it worth for this society where we have poorer graduates and richer illiterates? Well, we must understand, uh, liter literacy is on many different levels. ABC is one kind of literacy, on the street there is another kind of literacy, in the political sphere another kind of literacy, in the business world another kind of literacy. So literacy is not just ABCD, that's a very simplistic way of looking at it. Somebody may not know ABC, but uh, he is very literate with something else. And above all, you come to an Indian Institute of Technology, not for a luxurious life, because of thirst for knowledge, to know, to become competent, to be able to create something, to be able to create something in the world which has not been done till now. Not to somehow amass something at somebody's cost, and live somewhere, wherever you think is luxurious. Look at their faces and see, do they look joyful? Well, they look like they've been fed like pigs that you can see, but do they look joyful? Do they look fulfilled? Do they… is there some great energy about them? Do you want to live a life like that? Hello? Do you want to live a life like that? I'm asking, please don't ever seek a life like that because all you have in this life is, as I already said in the very beginning, this is just a certain amount of time. Time is going away. Since you sat here, you're, you're about thirty-five minutes or more than that, an hour. An hour closer to your grave right now, you know this since you came here? Yes, all of us, yes or no? Mortality is one thing that we have forgotten, that is why we are thinking of all these funny things. Life is just going away. If you really, if this second to you, actually minute by minute, minute by minute, you are closer to your grave, it's going to be over. So what will be the most important thing? How profound is your experience of life? And when it comes to activity, how profoundly can you touch life around you? This is all that matters, isn't it? Your experience of life is profound. When you sit here, in your experience, this is the most profound experience because this is all that matters, the intensity and profoundness of your experience. When it comes to activity, what a difference can you make? You may not be thinking like that right now, but think through this. Suppose you cook something. Do you have a… Maggie <laughs> He's an MSG or something, huh? No, 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 not that MSG, I'm… I'm just <laughs> what is that chemical, huh? That's Monosodium all… Glutamate. Monosodium glutamate. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, 
If you cook something, even if you make Maggi noodles and you give it to your friend, eat it back, <laughs> he spits it out. Do you like it? If he eats and says, this is fantastic, then you say, oh, nice. Because for even doing the two-minute job, it's two minutes, right? The ad says it's two minutes, I don't know how long it takes, huh? Yeah. That's a it's not two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> even for the two-minute job, you want to touch that somebody's life? If that guy spat it out, that's the last time you're going to give him those noodles. That saves his life, that's another matter <laughs> So if you build something, let's say you built a hall, People look at this and say, oh my god, terrible and nobody wants to come into this hall. You want to build such a hall? No, you want people to come and say, wow, yes? You want to write a book that nobody reads? Huh? No? You want to make a movie that nobody wants to see? No? You want people to see and walk out with tears in their eyes? Yes or no? When you do something, you must understand this. Human activity is meaningful only in some way we touch another life. How many lives is the question? You heard of Richard Bach? No. As a generation, you never read Richard Bach? Nobody? Oh, I'm surprised. In our generation, there was nobody who did not read Richard Bach. Please look him up. Richard Bach wrote a book called Illusions, another one called Jonathan Livingstone Seagull. It's all about flying his entire life. I was supposed to fly with him three years ago, but uh, at the age of seventy-four, he was flying a small plane and uh, he had an accident and broke some sixteen bones in his body. So after that, he's not flying <laughs> So, his entire life was about flight and all his books are about flight and how flight relates to our life. And in one of the books he writes, of all the joys of flying, <laughs> I thought this is… after that I stopped reading him. <coughs> after… of all the joys of flying that he elogized all his life, he said the greatest joy is when you see another pilot and you roll your wings and he responds rolling his wings, that's the greatest joy <laughs> After living an absolutely adventurous life, this is the greatest joy because touching another life it always is like that. Whether it's music or dance or cooking or writing a book or building something, everything is because it touches another life, it matters, isn't it? A criminal does not touch other people's life like that. You have two ways to live. That is, people are… Ha people are joyful because you're here or people will be joyful because you're gone. There are two ways to live. Please, what will you choose? First one <laughs> First one? People are joyful because you're here. Yes. Yes. That's, yes, that's good. So, about somebody is living better than us, I'm saying you should not even look how somebody is living because it's a bloody brief life, believe me. Before you know what's happening, It'll be gone. You may not think so right now, you think you have a lot of time on your hands. But if you intensely get involved in something, before you know what is happening, life will be gone. Because it's such a brief life. Have you noticed on a particular day, if you are very intense and joyfully involved in something, twenty-four hours just pass off like a minute? Is it so? Another day you're a little depressed and looking around at everybody, that day twenty-four hours feel like a eon. So time is a very relative experience. Only miserable people will have a long life because in misery time stretches itself. But if you're living an intense and exuberant life, poof, it'll be gone, hundred years will be gone like that. Shall I bless you with a long life? No. Even if you live to be hundred, it should feel like you lived for two days. And that's how it will be. That is how it will be if you focus on creating something worthwhile. 
But if you're looking at other people, who is wearing better clothes, who is driving a better car, whose house is better than mine, if you look at this, your life is ruined. Because forever, somebody will be wearing something better than you, somebody will be driving something better than you, somebody will be living in a better home than you, yes or no? Forever, you will become enslaved to that nonsense. Don't ever start your life like that. All of you, you're being empowered through education. You must think in terms of, what is it that I can create? What can I create in this life? Don't worry about how to earn a living with so much education and this many cerebral cells. You think earning a living is a problem when an earthworm does it?